All right, welcome to the channel. I uh, just wanted to do a fairly quick video. I've uh, had people ask me before uh, about my salt mixing station. So uh, I, I did a video maybe like a couple years ago on it and I don't think anything's really changed, but uh, I figured, you know, I'd kind of do a, an updated video uh, just if anybody's interested. So this is my setup. Um, I have, these are 60 gallons each. I bought them at Tractor Supply Company. Uh, you can find all kind of containers online. A lot of them have pretty high shipping costs associated with them because they're so large. So I went to Tractor Supply and found these and they had a lot of other ones. So if you have one in your area, that might be a good route to go. Um, so this one is salt water. This one is RODI water. Um, let's see what all we can go over about them. Uh, they look sloppy. You know, you can see the purple primer on the pipe, stuff like that. This setup is sitting in my basement. My basement is for the most part unfinished. And you even see on the wall it has the old wood paneling. Uh, my basement is just used for storage. So, um, you know, I, I didn't care about appearance to these like nobody sees them except for everybody watching this video but anyway um fairly simplistic um i used the are they iwaki the japanese pumps they were supposed to be about the best you can get so that's what i used for this uh basically uh what i have here is um, I have a timer on both of them and they both have recirculation. So uh, every, every couple hours they kick on and run for like 15 minutes uh, just to recirculate the water and make sure everything's like stirred and fresh. Uh, that's on both of them. Uh, otherwise I can manually push the button, you know, and turn them on when I need to get some water from them. Uh, on the RODI, so I have a setup so that, you know, I can open that valve and fill up my um, salt mix container uh, when it's time for me to actually mix salt. And then I also have down here so that I can fill jugs with RODI water as necessary. So I just have a piece of Python hose cut, you know, just a little extra cut off valve there in case I need it. But I'll fill that jug and use, the only thing I really use it for is my auto top off in my son's 35 gallon water box. Um, I have a five gallon auto top off container there. And uh, that really lasts for two weeks on that tank. So, but I, I just fill it up every week, you know, as part of my maintenance. So I just fill up that jug, carry it upstairs and, you know, top that off. Saltwater mixing station. Um, so what I have on that is kind of the same setup. Uh, I can open that valve and I have a Python hose that is 30 feet. So I can run it completely upstairs. And, uh, when I do my water changes, I run that hose. It's up at the top of the stairs and I just, uh, have one of the Python hooks on it. I hook it onto a, uh, brute trash can that I use, um, and it has the wheels on the bottom of it. So I roll it over to the door, set that on it, fill it up. Uh, and then, you know, I go and I have the CHA, uh, whichever uh, pump that is inside it, that I pump the water from the container into the tanks, you know, so I just wheel it around to whichever tank I'm working on. It's a, I mean, it's a fairly, easy setup you know there's not there's not a lot to it i've thought about doing automatic water changes on my tanks before with dosing pumps or whatever may or may not you know do that i'm, I'm still considering it uh right now i mean this setup it my maintenance that i do is every i do a water change every two weeks and i do 20 percent so it's you know it's not a lot I mean I'm doing you know roughly like 30 35 gallons something like that every two weeks so it's it's not it's not a ton of work or inconvenience so it really just uh, works out or works for me for the most part 
Uh, the other part of this setup is RODI units out on the side of the wall. Um, my water here is pretty clean anyway because I actually run a two-stage whole house water filter system. So where my water comes into my house, I have two stages of five micron carbon filter blocks, the larger size one, you know, um, like double or triple the size of these, um, feeding water to my whole house because in the area that I live, sometimes they announce like boil water advisories and things like that. Uh, so I never did trust the water that we have here. So I've keep those changed out every three months as well. So I'm initially getting filtered water before it even gets to this unit. So when it gets to this unit, then, you know, I have the filter, two carbon stages and two DI stages. Um, so my water is super <laughs> clean by the time it gets to, um, my storage container. Uh, let's see what else. So as far as that goes, you know, those get changed out every three months that the pre-filter never gets dirty since I already have another pre-filter before that. I, I've never seen anything on it, but I do, I change it out just anyway, maybe every six months just to have a fresh one in there. Uh, the DI, that lasts for a while, you know, I, I wait till the first chamber is pretty much completely depleted and then I just move the second one over to that one and then replace. So, uh, I mean, that it, it takes a while for that one. It doesn't use it up very much. Uh, salt that I use. Uh, you can see on part of the box, so I've got extra salt. Um, oh, and just down here, you know, I have my, there's a HANA tester. I uh, also have a leak detector down there so that it shuts off the feed line uh, if it detects a leak there. Uh, also, you'll see a T there, and that goes up under my house to the crawl space to a RODI storage container where I have a automatic um, auto top off unit set up for the 100 gallon tank. So since it, uh, since it takes more and I didn't, I didn't want to have, I didn't have room for a storage tank in the cabinet or anywhere beside it. I put that actually up under the house and ran, you know, the, the pump has no trouble. I use the Neptune auto top off. The pump has no trouble pumping it from my crawl space, you know, up to the tank. So, uh, so both things, this RODI container and the, um, I think it's a 10 gallon that I have under the house. Both those get filled up off this unit. Uh, okay, so back to salt. Um, the Tropic Marin Pro Reef is what I use. There's another bucket in the box. There's just a box of it. Uh, you'll see a Instant Ocean box over there or a bucket. Um, so just to kind of explain what that is, um, I use the Pro Reef daily all the time. Uh, well, not daily, whenever I mix them, but I use that full time. I have the bucket of Instant Ocean because whenever it was, and I don't know when it expires or whatever, it's just been sitting there forever. Um, when we were having all the COVID and supply chain shortages and all that stuff, I ran out of Tropic Marin and I couldn't get any salt. So uh, I needed some to do a water change pretty quickly. So I ran, I drove, I found a place within an hour that had some buckets of instant ocean. So I drove and, uh, and picked up a bucket I used a little bit of it, uh, probably about half the bucket, and then I found a place I could get some more Tropic Marn from, so ordered that, and that bucket's been sitting there of the Instant Ocean ever since. I don't like the Instant Ocean. I, when I was mixing it, I didn't even put it in my 
uh, mixing bin here. Uh, I actually mixed it by hand in another bucket because my experience with the Instant Ocean is that it uh, has like a buildup, you know, whatever you're, if you're using a mixing container, it has a buildup in it. And which using the Tropic Mara, and I've never experienced that, but the tank stays just as clean as the RODI. Um, the only marks you see are on the outside of the container. Now I did experience the one issue that Tropic Marin had, was it about a, was it a year ago? I'm not sure of the time frame. Um, they had buckets of salt coming out of their facility in Turkey. And for whatever reason, it had some kind of, I don't want to say impurity, but it had something in it that was some kind of clay that did, um, put like this brown film inside the tank. Um, Tropic Marin released a statement saying they did all kind of testing and uh, it was completely unharmful and wouldn't cause any issues or changes to your tank. Uh, it just left like this brownish film in the mixing container. And they offered to uh, anybody that bought salt that, w that came from their facility in Turkey at the time you could report it, you know, take a picture of the batch number and all that stuff, and they would send you another bucket or whatever of salt from their uh, German facility. So I did have that happen, and all I did was, I think I got two buckets of it, and I'd pretty much already used all of it uh, when that happened. So all I did was um, took some citric acid, put in the bin, cleaned it out real good and uh, flushed it out multiple times and then then I was good to go. So ever since I've been getting the, uh, I checked all of these, you know, they're all uh, from the German facility. Uh, ever since I've been back to using that, uh, the, the tank's clear and there's no buildup on the inside. So no other issues there. I've, you know, always been happy with that salt. It's a synthetic, you know, salt, pharmaceutical grade materials. So I just kind of, I've been using it for years now. Uh, I did try the H&W uh, salt before and it left a little buildup in the in the bin. So I just, you know, it just, the Tropic Marin is so clean uh, that I just feel like that's worth it right there to pay the premium price for it, you know, and I think all salts like eventually there's going to be a bad batch at some point you're going to have issues with it so uh i, I know i've read forums about you know several of the other brands having issues at different times so it's one of those things you just got to always be aware of and cautious of that yeah you might have a problem but you know they tried to rectify it so you know if they they did all kinds of testing and made sure everything was good and then would send you out replacement salt as well so i think they stand behind their product and you know as long as i don't run into any major issues with it i'll i'll continue to use it the only main issue i've ever had is just the shortages of it uh, for a long period of time like pretty much a full year it was just hard to get my hands on it so i always keep at least two spare buckets you know and i uh, just rotate them out as i get more in uh, now i used to only keep one spare bucket but since i ran to those issues and wasn't able to get it, i keep two so right now i've got you know that bucket's almost full i've got another new bucket and then i've got that box um so i, I think i got the box because it was on sale or something like that or they didn't have a bucket at the time i can't remember which it was this time uh the the thing i hate about the boxes is every time i order it uh the boxes come completely beat up and busted up like the other side of it is split open so I always worry about the uh, the plastic bag that the salts in if it gets a little tearing or something or somehow gets contamination in it I always worry about that so I, I stick with the buckets for that reason they they say the boxes are probably I think they said you know it's a better value if you go that route but I'd rather get the buckets I mean I just they're just sealed better um, but I think that's it for this video you know let me know if you have any questions or anything. Uh, I do have the towels over the top of them for a reason. Um, in my basement, I at one time got these little gnat things that 
they, uh, the pest control company said they were drain gnats, but they were getting in the, climbing through the vent and getting in the water and dying. Uh, so I had the pest control company, they came out and like sprayed around for them and I put plastic over the tanks, you know, and covered everything when they did that. But uh, I, I've still seen, seen them, you know, just periodically. So they didn't totally get rid of them. Um, it's funny, I don't have them up on the main floor of my house. I just have them in the basement. So I don't know where they are down here or, or whatever. But anyway, I just put those towels over there, over the tops, and seems to just keep them out. All right, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and uh, that'll do it for this one.